I, I went through a lot of hard stuff. I had to run large groups of people, about 30 or 40 people in work, and like, um, like I mentioned carpeting. We did this week-long job where we did carpeting at night and slept and studied during the day. Like, but we didn't have enough sleep anyway because we had to fit studying in too during the daytime. Um, and this old Russian man, probably about 55 or 60, his name was Sasha. The carpet knives go like this, and then they, they bend up like that. And we only had one guy that we'd hired from a carpet company to help us lay it. And the rest, we were just supposed to do the work of it, the EPF was. And I was assigned in charge of everyone. And he had a carpet knife, and he put it in his pocket so that that little, that little part kind of stuck out, though. And he went like this, and he picked up the carpet, and he cut his wrists like this. Not the inside of it, but the outside, like from that. That, and I only knew a few words of Russian, so I came rushing over to handle this because I was the IC. And I was like, oh gosh, are you in pain? But he didn't understand a word I said. Um, so I wrapped my hands tightly around. I should have probably wrapped it around here because that's where the blood was coming from. But I wrapped it around his wrist because that's all I could think to do, stop the blood. It was really bleeding badly. So we walked from the second floor of the CB where we were carpeting. What's the CB? Oh, uh, the, clear, the Clearwater Bank building. Uh, the Clearwater, OK. That's where all the staff eat here in Clearwater. Okay. And uh, so we walked down to the truck. And by that time, there was blood all. That we were leaving a trail of blood because he was bleeding badly. We got in the back of the truck. And in fact, it was the carpet guy that we had hired that was driving us. He was the one really worried about it. Um, the non-Scientologist, in other words. Yeah, he was non-Scientologist, um, a wog. <laughs> um, so we drove to the hospital, and I'm holding it, and I'm so scared. I don't know what we're doing. Um, Where'd you go, Morton Plant, the one right down the street? I think so. I don't know. And so I went in there, and I was holding it, and they couldn't even tell which one of us was bleeding because there was blood all over me. I had it on my face. I had it all down my uniform. It was on my shoes. And like our hands were just like a bloody mess. Like like we were just holding each It looked like we were hold, holding each other. And so we brought him into the room and we laid him down. And we couldn't, we couldn't get any information from him or like, you know, was he allergic to anything? Because he only spoke Russian. And then it was about 4 or 5 in the morning, so then the, the emergency staff turned to this me and This was 4 said, in the morning that this happened? Yeah, because we were working all night. And then they turned to me and they said, how old are you? And I think, by that time I was 14, I said, 14? And they were like, what, what were you doing with them? They, uh, they're like, why were you there? They were totally questioning me, and I said, I said, you know what, I just happened to be there. I was just kind of... I'm friends with one of them, so I was just sort of standing by and helping out. In fact, I was running the whole team, but I was like, oh, and uh, they didn't really believe me, though. So, and then finally someone said, you know what, he's Church of Scientology, and, and, uh, and then they were like, oh. <laughs> they all, they, the, the, there was like a murmur sort of thing to the room, they were like, oh. Was Sasha okay after that? Yeah, he got stitched up. And Did you get in trouble for going to no, the hospital but, or anything? No, but, but when the, the Sea Org training officer, which was a, 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 a Sea Org member in charge of all of us, like, but he, was, he hadn't been there during our work time, he said, he was like, yeah, he got himself cut. Because it was like stupid of the guy to get himself cut. Um, but the Sea Org training officer, by the way, would do like pretty bad things. Like, We had a lot of people that came from Russia because suddenly a group of them were recruited and put on the EPF. This was when Scientology did their whole the uh, campaign in campaign Russia. in Russia. Yeah. So they brought a whole lot of them over here to join the yeah, Sierra. Yeah. Like at one point, almost the whole EPF, which was about sixty people, was full of Russians. Uh huh. Whatever so happened to all those Russians? They became like handymen and maids. Did all the lowly labor. Were they Sasha, still there? Sasha's when you now. He polishes the the brass um, banisters inside the lobby hmm. of the FH. Must be pretty does, shiny. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he does a few other jobs, but that's mostly what I see him doing. So, well, Mr. Engelhart would do things like... Now, who's Mr. Engelhart again? Oh, he's the Sea Org training officer. He was the, the Sea Org member who was in charge of all us EPFers, David Engelhart. Um, well, the Russians all came over, and they weren't used to Florida weather. It was in the middle of summer, so some of them like, didn't really understand deodorant that much either because they came from cold cities. Um, so... This guy named Vladimir, I, I guess his feet stank. I never smelled them, but Mr. Engelhart came to Muster one day. I, he told him a few times like to, he should get it handled or put some powder in his shoes. 
and he was in a bad mood, so he came over to the line that Vladimir was in. He put, he's like, whose feet are that? And then he pushed the whole line of people, so they kind of like went back. They didn't fall, but they like, like kind of were shoved back. And then he got Vladimir, picked up his foot, really like, Vladimir was babbling in Russian. He had no idea what he'd done exactly. He was like, oh. And he, Mr. Engar, like picked up his foot. So Vladimir fell on his back, like just something. Whew. And then uh, Mr. Engar threw, uh, picked up his shoe, like jerked it off his foot, and threw it right next to Vladimir. So Vladimir like ducked because he thought it was going to hit his head. And Mr. Engar's like, go soak your feet in bleach, anything. Just get rid of that smell. Your fucking dorm stinks. And and just yelling at him. And Mr. Engerhout was known to have a bad temper. He, uh, another thing, we had a storm. We had this storm and down by the sandcastle, which is another building of the, um, of the Sea Orgs, um, they get scared of flooding sometimes in bad storms. So we had to go down and put sandbags out there. And Mr. Engerhout was giving this whole s lecture on how dangerous it was and how we had to be careful. And this, this little like 13 year old guy, he kind of snickered a little. He's like, because it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, and Mr. Engar took him. And we were like um, at this, standing on this concrete like walkway that was like, there was a drop like about six feet down for trucks to back up and unload stuff or I don't remember exactly. And Mr. Engar took this like little 13 year old boy and hung him over the edge. Like the guy's feet were still on the edge but they were kind of slipping off like because he, he was slanted. He hung him over the edge by his shirt and the guy was like, he was all scared and Mr. Engart's like, this is not a joke. Do you think I'm joking? This is not funny. And he's like, don't laugh again. And he, and he put little boy back. And the, the guy tried to, like, he, he tried to, like, laugh it off. He's like, oh. <laughs> but he was all shaken up. Um, Mr. Engart actually got really mad at me at one point for, I'd borrowed a public Scientologist book, and I'd forgotten to return it. And now that person had moved off, and they sent me a a letter asking for it back and I didn't know where it was so I, I, I was like oh no this person sent me a letter I don't know where it is and um, he got really angry at me when I, I couldn't find it and he had me in the office in his office that day and he yelled at me for a long time about how I was a horrible person and how I wasn't ethical and I wasn't responsible and I didn't deserve to be a Sea Org member and I started crying and crying, and he put me in lower conditions again, which were like doubt, and you know where you have to make amends and do all these projects, and you know grovel at their feet, and um, always, yeah. And then, oh well, there was one thing Mr. Engelhart did that was kind of nice. I don't think he did out of niceness. So um, there was this lady. She had she'd gone to a weekend seminar on Scientology, and she joined this year right away. And just through talking with her, I found out about um, she had really bad skin cancer, and no one knew that she'd only been in Scientology for a weekend. She had bad, like she would go out and she would start forming tumors. Like she had had like almost 50 or something like removals of tumors, and you could see it in her skin. She showed me all these scars, and I didn't, I hadn't really recognized them at first because she was very pale. She didn't get tans at all. Um, and so I found out about this, and she told me, and I said, "Whoa!" And I told Mr. Engelhart. And Mr. Engar just kind of told her, he said, you know what? He said, if you were just like to leave quietly, I wouldn't say anything. And so to she her. left, yeah. And this was a good thing because it saved her from the Sea Org. But I think he was just doing that because, like my dad mentioned about my cut knee, this, the org doesn't like to pay for medical bills. It costs way too much to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, on the EPF, at one point I slept in, a, in a, like a broom closet sort of thing, like our cleaning closet. Why? With, because I'd come back from a visit with my dad and they didn't have room for me. The rooms would be really crowded. And oh, the rooms were so crowded. We would have like between 12 and 18 people in one apartment with a bathroom for all of us. And we'd have to take like one minute showers like really quickly. And this was EPF? Mm hmm. We did also in the Cadetic at one point too. But it was, you know, we, we had a bit more time there. Was this all girls in the? Yeah, it was all girls. Um, so we would have to take showers really quickly and the dorm captains were taught that they had to be very strict and would write knowledge reports, like little reports on out ethics, things we had done in the room, like stayed up late, ate food in the dorm, stuff like that. She, my friend Cece Frazier stayed in longer than a minute and the dorm captain was yelling at her to get out and Cece had left the door unlocked like she was supposed to. Who's the dorm to. captain? Anne something, she was Russian so I don't know. So. Um, Anne rushed into the bathroom 
and like tore open the shower curtain and ordered Cece to get out. And Cece's the same age as me, like 14 or something, and Anne's 25, 26. And Cece's sitting there naked, and she's like, get out, get out. And she was all, and Anne's like, no, you get out now, you get out now. And so, anyway, stuff like that would happen. Oh, God.